right, today we will be talking about the anatomy and physiology from the mare's side. We're going to go over the major parts of her reproductive tract and how each part functions. Then we will take a look at the hormones at play during her breeding cycle and how they function together to result in a pregnancy. So let's take a look at the anatomy of the mare's reproductive tract. When you lift up the mare's tail, the first part you're going to see is called the vulva. This is the exterior opening that leads into the rest of the reproductive tract. The vulva protects the tract from air and any other contaminants that might try to enter the tract. The next part of the tract, which is on the interior side, is called the vagina. This is a six to eight inch long tube that will hold the penis during a normal regular mating session. At the back of the vagina, we find the cervix. The cervix is a small tube, normally about four inches long, and it changes shape and consistency as the horm hormones change throughout the cycle. The cervix is the barrier that protects the uterus from any contaminants that might enter, enter the vagina during breeding. When breeding, a long pipette is inserted into the vagina and into through the cervix into the uterus. Now, you'll notice on the picture that there at the bottom of the vagina is a hole for um, urine, which is called the urethra. You wanna make sure you keep your pipette pointed up because it's very easy if you're going at a downward slant for that pipette to be inserted into the urethra, which is not where we want to deposit semen and will not result in a pregnancy. Our next part of the mare's reproductive tract is called the uterus. The mare has a Y-shaped hollow uterus. Each of the sides are called a uterine horn. The mare has two uterine horns, and the middle is called the uterine body. The uterus is suspended in the abdomen by a broad ligament, which helps keep it in the right place. The uterus is where the foal will grow and develop for 340 days. As we follow up the uterus into the uterine horn, we then reach the oviducts. The oviducts are also known as fallopian tubes. And there's an oviduct on each side of the uterine horn. So there's two oviducts. The fallopian tubes are small coiled tubes that connect each uterine horn to the ovary. We've now reached the ovary. The ovary is a kidney shaped structure that produces the eggs for ovulation. Normally, a mare will have two ovaries, one on each side of the uterine horn. We'll come back and talk more about ovaries in a second. The next part we'll talk about is the infundibulum. When the mare ovulates an egg from the ovary, the infundibulum is the catcher's mitt that will grab the egg and transport it safely into the oviduct. The isthmus is a part of the oviduct where fertilization occurs. If no fertilization occurs, the egg will remain in the oviduct and be absorbed back into the body. If it is fertilized, it will then move into the uterus around day four post ovulation. During the 21 day cycle, follicles on the ovaries are growing. Follicles contain the egg that will ovulate and hopefully result in a pregnancy. Usually one follicle becomes dominant and is the largest. This dominant follicle will be the one who ovulates. We can help ovulation occur by injecting hormones into the mare. These hormones attach to recept receptors on the follicle and help ensure ovulation. Occasionally, there is a second follicle large enough to have receptors for this injected hormone, and it will cause a second ovulation. So now two eggs have ovulated. This is important to note because twins and horses is not a positive situation and your vet will walk you through the options available to you. It is important to note that the ovulated follicle forms the corpus luteum, which we call the CL. The CL then produces progesterone for 14 to 15 days. If the mare is not pregnant, the CL will eventually regress and stop producing progesterone, which will then allow a new wave of follicles 
to begin growing. If she is pregnant, the CL will remain and continue to produce progesterone, which will help re, uh, retain the pregnancy. Let's take a look at the mare's estrus cycle. So there's two parts to the mare's cycle, the estrus phase and the diestrus phase. The estrus phase normally lasts between five and seven days, and this is when the mare is fertile, she's able to become pregnant, and she's also receptive towards the stallion. The diestrous phase is 14 to 16 days when the mare is not able to become pregnant and she is not receptive to the stallion. If the stallion shows interest in the mare during diestrous, the mare might kick, strike, squeal, show lots of other signs of not being receptive to the stallion. But what causes the mare to enter estrus and be receptive to the stallion or to enter diestrus and say, hey buddy, not interested today. If you watched our stallion series, you went through hormones and how all of those interact inside the stallion uh, to produce sperm and to create sperm. What's the same thing on the mare's side? Hormones are our little messengers that come from the brain and tell the mare's body what to do. So let's take a look at some of the major players inside the mare's system and how they work together uh, towards the end goal of letting this mare become pregnant. So here are a list of some of the main hormones we are going to see within the mare's reproductive cycle. GnRH, gonadotropin releasing hormone, is created in the hypothalamus inside the brain and it stimulates the production of LH and FSH. FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, is created in the anterior pituitary and stimulates follicle growth. This allows the ovary to produce that wave of follicles. LH is luteinizing hormone. It's also created in the anterior pituitary. It allows for the maturation of the follicles and at its peak, it induces ovulation. Estrogen is created within the follicles on the ovary. It helps with the LH release, which causes ovulation, and it inhibits FSH, which says, hold up, we don't need any more follicles growing on the ovary, we already have enough. Two other important hormones include progesterone, which is produced from the CL, which sits on the ovary. And progesterone inhibits LH release. The second one is a prostaglandin, which is called PGF2-alpha. This is created in the uterus and it inhibits progesterone. PGF2-alpha will stop a pregnancy and it lets the brain know, hey, we're not pregnant, so we can start our cycle back over. Here we can see the mare's 21-day cycle laid out on a linear time graph. We can see that as estrus gets closer, estrogen increases from the follicles on the ovary. This allows LH to be stimulated um, and starting to be produced from within the brain, which then on day zero causes the ovulation of that dominant follicle so that egg is ovulated. From the ovary where the egg was ovulated, turns into the CL, which produces progesterone. This allows the uterus time to recognize whether it's pregnant or not. If it's not pregnant, PGF2-alpha comes and regresses that CL. It inhibits progesterone, and we start the cycle all over again.